Welcome back to another episode of This English Malarkey slash English Conversations with Jake. Now normally I do interviews with people on the streets for you to learn English with, but today I'm actually taking some of the expressions people have already used and I'm going to break them down and show you some examples of them in context. So we're going to look at seven examples of expressions that you can start to use in your everyday English, in your speech and in your writing. So these phrases can be a little bit tricky to understand, but once you know what they mean, you'll be able to use them. By the way, if you'd like a free study guide on how to learn English, on what the things you need to do to get to the next level, uh, it goes all the way from A1 to C2, and you can check out the study guide I've put together in the link down below in the description. It's all levels, so definitely check it out if you're learning English. Right then, get ready, activate the subtitles if you need them, and let's go. These examples are actually from episode number 43 of This English Malarkey, where I was interviewing people on the street about the cost of living crisis in the UK. To check out the whole video, it's up there somewhere, wherever it is. Phrase number one, hard hitting. Imagine you're watching a news program and the story they're covering is particularly powerful or intense. The reporter might describe it as a hard hitting story. It's not always negative, but it's something that is impactful and very direct. Uh, you could think of a boxer who throws a punch with a lot of force behind it being a hard-hitting punch. There's quite a, like an increase in inflation as well, um, which is yeah, which is quite hard-hitting. Phrase number two: to feel the pinch. Let's say you're chatting with a friend and they mention that this month they're struggling financially. They might say, "I'm really feeling the pinch at the moment." So this idiomatic phrase means that they're experiencing, like I said, financial difficulties and they're feeling the effects of having very little money. Prices are rising again next year, they say. Absolutely, and now we've got you know, bird flu with eggs and turkeys and yep. so on and so forth. Yeah, it's all it's hitting the pinch, I guess, at the moment. It will be. Phrase number three, to be a staunch supporter of something. Imagine a political campaign and there is someone who's very passionate and dedicated to the candidate that they are supporting. They're a staunch supporter because they will defend and promote that candidate even in the face of opposition. I've always been a, a staunch supporter of the, the capitalism, uh, you know, but... Uh... Phrase number four, to get out of hand. When something becomes difficult to control, it's said to be getting out of hand. For example, a party that starts off fun and quiet, but then escalates and becomes very rowdy, disturbs all the neighbours and the police get called. You could also use it for a person who gets angry or irate and then violent. Sometimes you get people like that at these parties that get out of hand. There you go. Uh, I think that I think things have gotten a little bit out of hand and I think it's time for... Phrase number five, a smidge. A smidge is a small or a tiny amount of something. It's a casual way of saying a little bit, a little bit. For example, I need just a smidge more salt on my dinner. Uh, it means that they just need a little bit more salt, really. I think it's time for maybe just a smidge of government intervention. Phrase number six, to nip it in the bud. This phrase means to stop something before it gets, uh, before it becomes a bigger problem. So if you've got a smidge of a problem, you want to nip it in the bud so that it doesn't become a big problem. Imagine you're a gardener and you prune a, uh, you prune a plant to prevent it from flowering. This is a similar concept. Um, it's stopping a problem before it escalates and becomes a bigger problem. For example, we need to nip this conflict in the bud before it escalates. And to uh, uh, sort of nip it in the bud. I've always been a, a staunch supporter of the, the capitalism, uh, you know, but uh, I think that I think things have gotten a little bit out of hand, and I think it's time for maybe just a smidge of government intervention to uh, uh, sort of nip it in the bud. And finally, phrase number seven to cut back on. This phrase means to reduce the amount of something. If someone is trying to lose weight, they might be cutting back on sugar. So they'll stop eating cakes, they'll cut back on chocolate, um, and they'll just reduce the amount of sugar that they are consuming. That's it. You can literally see the prices going up. Um, so yeah, uh, just cut back on things, you know, but nothing, yeah. nothing serious, unfortunately for me. I suppose uh, a good amount of um, kind of expendable cash to think uh, about how I want to spend but that definitely means cutting back on things like going out for dinner uh, and things like that so yeah so that's it for this video on English idioms and phrases that you can use in your everyday English 
Uh, remember, practice makes perfect, so try using these expressions in your own conversations as well. Uh, and don't forget to check out the link below with the free study guide for how you can get from A1 to C2 as a basic kind of bare bones of how to do it. Um, that's in the description below. Thanks for watching. You've got this English malarkey.